Welcome back grade nines. Today we're going to look at the concept of demand. Now those of you who use the Oxford Head Start EMS textbook, you will find this unit on page 80 if you want to go through the theory. And um, we will also be, be discussing a little bit on the whiteboard and then I also have some slides that will assist you in understanding this concept. Now um, with this unit, we're going to look at a couple of things. It's called the price theory and we're going to look at the concepts of demand, supply, and we're going to find equilibrium point, and then we'll also be looking at um, changes in demand and supply. So this is what is lying ahead for us in this unit. Now let's start off by asking the question, what is demand in the economic sense of the word? Demand is that number of items can be a product or a service that consumers will buy at a specific price. Please note, they are prepared to pay for it. So it's not just, oh, I think I might want that. They want to buy it at that specific price. And that's important to know if you're going to have a business one day, to know what the demand for your specific product will be at a specific price so that we can meet the consumer's um, preferences as well. Now, how do we um, work with this concept of demand? I'm going to show you how to plot it on a graph to draw the demand curve. And then after that, we'll move on to supply and a few other concepts as well. So we're going to do it here on the whiteboard and I'm going to use my ever popular example of Twiggles um, chips. If you're in my school, you'll know it very well. There's different flavors. The only one that I currently have with me in lockdown is the cheese flavor, um, but my students know it very well. And we're going to use that in order to show you how um, demand works and how, what the curve looks like. Now, first of all, hopefully you all have got maps at this stage and you know how to draw graphs, but let's um, just do it here on the board with you. So when we need to um, do or plot the demand curve, we need obviously a vertical axis and a horizontal axis, that Y and the X axis. Now on the vertical axis, we always plot or indicate the price in rands. On the uh, horizontal axis, we going to indicate the quantity that is demanded by the consumer for the specific product. Okay, and then very important, you now need to indicate the price and the quantity. We, obviously, you will use a ruler so that your increments and measurements are correct. This needs to be done so that you can get a clear picture of what is going on here. Now, always we start where these two lines meet, like it looks like a capital L, that will be 0 0.00 rand and zero um, quantity. Now let's have a look at my, my Twiggles chips. I'm going to use just increments of one rand. So let's try and do it more or less equal. Three, four, five, six. And let's do the same here. I'm going to do it in 10, 20, 30, 40, maybe 50. So this will be one rand, two rand. 3 rand, 4 rand, 5 rand, 6 rand, 10 packets, 20 packets, 30 packets, 40 and 50 packets. Okay, so now let's use my class, um, one grade 9 class that comes to me for EMS and um, they want to buy Twiggles chips from me. Okay, so now tell me quickly. Um, you know that we normally sell it in our school for five rand a packet. Now, let's say in a class of 30 students, um, at five rand, 20 students are willing to pay five rand for a packet of Twiggle strips. So I'm going to write it over here. So for five rand, 20 students are willing to pay um, five rand to buy this packet of chips. Now let's say I think, okay, listen, maybe, um, maybe I, I, I just want to make it a little bit cheaper. And now for the next week, I'm going to sell this same packet of chips, but at four rand. 
all right what do you think is going to happen do you think we will still only have 20 out of the 50 students in the class who will buy this packet of chips no definitely not so some of the students who previously maybe thought it's a bit more expensive or maybe they didn't have five rand now at four rand they are prepared to buy that packet of chips so let's say the whole class will now buy that packet of chips so at four rand 30 students are demanding a packet of Twinkles chips. Okay, and now I've had nice sales after a week and I decide, listen, we're actually doing this for charity. We want to raise a bit of funds for, for one of our charitable organizations that the school supports. I think I'm going to increase the price rather to six rand. Okay, so now the same packet of chips, nothing has changed, but now I'm charging six rand for this packet of chips. What do you think? Are we still going to have 30 or 20 students um, wanting to buy this product now at six rand? No, many of the students who just have five rand to buy this packet of chips are now going to say, well, I can't afford it anymore. I don't have that extra one rand. I can't buy it. There will still be a few who say, listen, we love this chips. There's lots of chips. It's a hundred grand. And and I'm still going to buy six rand for it, but there will definitely be fewer students. So let's say now only 10. In the class of 30, only 10 students are prepared to buy six rand for this packet of chips. And guys, this is exactly what demand is. Okay, so let's plot our schedule, our information on our graph to get the demand curve. So let's start there at six rand. At six rand, how many students were prepared um, to pay for this packet of chips or buy this packet of chips? Only 10. So what do we do is we find the price and we find the quantity. And there where these two meet, we make a little dot or a circle. So at six rand, only 10 students demanded a packet of Twiggles chips. Okay, next one. At five rand, how many students then wanted the packet of chips? 20. So we do the same. Five rand, 20. More or less over here. Obviously, yours will be done properly in your book with a, with a ruler. Good. So at five rand, 20 students demanded this packet of chips. They were prepared to pay five rand for it. Last one. At four rand, now it became quite cheap. So at four rand, 30 students said they wanted to buy the packet of chips. So more or less over here okay good and grade nines now i've plotted the individual points what we do then is we connect the dots right and that will be your demand curve we usually indicate the top and the bottom or the ends and um, to indicate that this is my or we label the uh, the curve and this is my demand curve Okay, so now you can think for yourself, maybe if it's three rand, then it will probably be about 40 students and so on. But with the information that we had, we could plot the demand curve. Now, something interesting that you can see is that it's got a negative slope or a negative slope. Right, so keep that in mind. Now, from this, what can you tell me? What do you think is the relationship? between price and quantity demanded according to, to the law of demand. Have Think a little bit about it if you want to pause and then give me an answer. That's also fine. Right. What does the law of demand say? The law of demand states that the higher the price, the lower the demand. And the lower the price, the higher the demand we indicate it like that i can summarize it here the higher the price then the lower the demand the lower the price then the higher the demand now this we say or we say that the law of demand has an inverse relationship between price and quantity demanded and that is what it means when prices go up the demand for that product goes down when the prices go down the demand for that product goes up okay now this is true if we only factor in changes in price okay so 
this works this law is true only if price changes all other factors stay the same now what are the other factors can you you can also pause the video again and then think a little bit for yourself if everything else if even the price stays the same what of a specific product what other factors could affect the demand for that product think a little bit right let's think of a couple of different scenarios first of all what better example can we ask for at our current time where we sit with the uh, corona pandemic and um, if people do not have money for whatever reason there's a change in the consumer's income that will definitely have an effect on the demand for a specific product so let's say you're in my class every day your mom gives you five rand to buy a packet of three bills chips and then you come and buy you part of my demand for um, the three bills chips now all of a sudden your mom lo loses her job she gets laid off because her company cannot the company that she works for cannot operate during this um, lockdown period your mom doesn't have income so that means you won't have income can you now afford to buy the packet of chips no you'll probably have to make a sandwich or something at home so if there's a change in consumer income that can also affect the demand of a product or for a product even if the price hasn't changed good the next one and um, we shouldn't underestimate the power of advertising say now i go around and um, the rest of the school doesn't really know about the twiggles chips that we sell only my great nines because i did them um, teach them i see them every day in class they know about the chips if i now go around and we make announcements over the intercom or intercom or we put up some posters and more students get to know about the twiggles chips that's so nice what do you think is going to happen to the demand for the product yes it might increase exactly at still five rand for example i haven't changed the price but because we did some advertising we might see an increase in the demand for the product good the next one the prices of other products can also influence the demand for a specific product um, and then we look at two things um substitute product and complementary products now say for example um if we think of and also once again a good um, example nowadays is the petrol price if we set if the petrol price for example increases quite dramatically it might have an effect on the demand for vehicles meaning for people wanting to buy vehicles because they might consider the fact that petrol is so expensive that they can't afford to buy a vehicle the the opposite is currently true especially in south africa the petrol price is dropping almost by the week we've never we've never expected that and that we might then see an increase in vehicle sales when when we're allowed to buy vehicles again so it complementary products if if the price of a product goes down perhaps it might um, increase the price uh, the demand for um, another product a complementary product then we also look at substitute products and there we always use the ever so popular butter and margarine example if i like to buy butter and that's what i put on my bread i will buy that but at some stage butter's price might become very very expensive and then i might stop buying butter and in its place i will substitute the butter for margarine so what will happen and i'm not the only one there might be lots of consumers feeling the way i do what will happen to the demand for margarine the demand for margarine might increase even though the price doesn't change at all right and then we also look at things like fashion trends you um think i just know that very well one season something is very fashionable and everybody wants to buy it and and in the next season nothing changes the price of that uh, item clothing item stays exactly the same but it's not in fashion anymore so what happens now even at that price the demand drops nothing to do with the price that there's a change in fashion or a change in consumer behavior
Another one that goes with fashion is then changes in tastes um, or um, preferences by consumers. Um, some people might prefer, if they have money, to now start um, buying ready or made meals or prepared meals instead of going out to buy the individual grocery items. And that can have an effect on the demand of those, of those items. Prices might not have changed, but because a consumer's preference or taste has changed, therefore, they will see a change in the demand. And then the last one um, is if consumers have a, an expectation that something might happen to the price of that product in the future, not now, but in the future. So in that, um, we can use, and, and for that example, we can use the Johannesburg Securities Exchange. Lots of people predict that the um, price of a specific share might increase or decrease in the future, and therefore they will buy or not buy a specific share. And that can have an influence on the quantity demanded. Nothing to do with the current price. It might stay exactly the same, but the consumer might prefer to either buy now more or less, depending on what they foresee for the future. Okay, grade nine. So this is just a short um, a video on how the mound works, how we plot it on a graph, um, and what the, what the slope or slant looks like, and how we actually deal with this concept of the mound in the economy. In the next video, we will now look then at supply from the supplier's point of view. I hope this helped you a bit. There will be also activities attached that you can practice um, this on your own to see if you can also use information, schedules given to you, and then you can go and plot this um, information on a graph.